going on here. Over the next uh, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be $150 billion worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure. But think of it in practical terms. That means, according to many experts, more than 2 billion tonnes of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP Let me in stop Dubai. You right there. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined? A forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon? A forest that we have kept alive? A forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, Does no, that no, no. give you I, the that, right that, to release that, that all of this carbon? Right. Does from... that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change? I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Ghana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. And guess what? Even with our greatest exploration of the oil and gas resource we have now, we will still be uh, net zero. Guyana will still be net zero. With all our exploration, we will points. still be net zero. No, no, there's no, no, Powerful, no, powerful no, no, words, no, no, no. Mr. President. Well, well, I, I'm not completed as yet. I am not finished as yet. I am just not finished as yet. Because this is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. We, the world in the last 50 years, has lost 65% of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world going well, to pay for it? Or are you, you in the pockets? You, are you in the pockets of those who have damaged the environment? Are you in the pockets? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroyed the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you paid right, to keep right, their Mr. message President. alive? There is no hypocrisy in our position. The Centre for International... There... Let me quote to you, Greenpeace, who say quite simply, to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, and you know that your own country is one of the most vulnerable to climate change because most, most of your population lives and, below and, and, sea and, and level. And we have paid, guess what? Guess what? We have paid for the mitigation. We have paid for the adop uh, adaptation. We are the ones who have to find revenue. So to, no, 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 no. I want to get I haven't we finished telling you what Greenpeace level. say. Yes, but let me tell you. Greenpeace, Greenpeace say we need to keep the majority of the world's remaining fossil fuels in the ground. Yeah, Greenpeace can say You're that. We're not doing that. Greenpeace and you can say that. But we need to get resources and the developing world, we need to get resources to build the sea defenses. We need to get sea defenses to build a drainage and irrigation system. You just said that we're six feet below sea level. Who is going to pay for the infrastructure? Who is going to pay for the drainage and irrigation? Who is going to pay for the development and advancement of our country? Are you going to pay? It's not coming from anywhere. It's not coming from Greenpeace or anyone else. Look at the adaptation budget that is required for the developing world. Where is the money coming from? Isn't there a cynicism here in Georgetown, best expressed by your vice president, who said recently, because there is this climate change imperative to decarbonize, our policy is to get as much oil out of the ground as quickly as possible. Now, he said, that's harsh for those who think that you should be environmentally sound, but that is the reality of it. Those were very honest words from your vice president. And that is what we are, honest. We are practical. So you're rushing, we're, rushing we are to get this oil practical. out before we, any deal is let, done let, to quote you, Dubai COP to transition away from oil and you, gas. You can say we are rushing, but we are very practical. We have this natural resource, and we are going to aggressively pursue this natural resource mm -hmm. because we have to develop our country. We are committed to the development of this region. We have to create the opportunity for our people because no one is bringing that for us. You, you no one is bringing that for us. No one is paying our agenda. Just a, no a, one is paying our a, agenda. A, a final thought about what this means inside your own country. Earlier on, I referred to the fact that 40% of the Guyanese population currently still lives in poverty. And according to USAID from a recent report, Guyana's political instability, which we also referred to, raises concerns that the country is unprepared for its newfound wealth. The tremendous influx of money opens many avenues for corruption. How do you as president ensure that that doesn't happen? So 
when we came into government, we said that there are a number of things that we must do. First of all, there must be an arm's length relationship with the uh, oil revenue. So first, the Minister of Finance has to declare all the revenue that comes into the system. If he does not declare that, uh, within 30 days, there's a 10-year mandatory jail term for the Minister of Finance. Secondly, any revenue that is spent from oil and gas must pass through the budgetary process. So it has to go through the Parliament. It has to be debated in the Parliament. It then comes into the system. It is then audited by the Auditor General at the end of what it was intended for. And then, of course, the investment decision is made by a committee that is arms sent away, an independent committee that is arms sent away from the government. Yeah. Just a final thought on the politics. You, you, you described the tensions around the 2020 election. It was hotly disputed. I think it's fair to say that there's a clear sort of ethnic element to the politics of Guyana. Your party is predominantly Indo-Guyanese. No, the opposition... We're, we're, we're the only national party. Well, that's what you say. But we're the only, nonetheless... But when you go on the ground, and I invite you to our Congress, you will see the representation of party. We but are I, the I only refer to the opposition party. leader, Aubrey Norton, from the opposition well, national well, now Congress. You're saying, so, so now you're saying that in the words of the opposition leader. No, I, I want to pursue the words he recently said, where he said that given everything that your government is doing with the oil money, to quote him, a one-party state is emerging in Guyana. There are fears that the money you have access to is entrenching your political supremacy. Well, well first of all, let me uh, address an issue. You have to give me a few moments. The ethnic division of this country was instigated by external forces. You are aware of this. It was instigated by external forces. We have to accept that. This is part of your legacy. Uh, part of your legacy is this, that you divided the people. We have been working aggressively on bringing back the people together. My agenda is a one Guyana agenda, and I want to see all of Guyana prosper, and prosperity comes to every single home. So. Our political party. South Africa is a, a treaty member of the International Criminal Court. If Putin comes here in August as planned, your government will be obliged to arrest him. As head of the ANC, do you believe your government should and indeed will arrest if Vladimir Putin? If it was Putin? according to the ANC, we will want President Putin to be here even tomorrow. You would? To come to come to come to our country. But, you would uh, welcome Vladimir Putin here of right course now. Would we you? Will welcome the man who is being investigated for war. We welcome him to come here as part and parcel of BRICS, but we know that we are constrained by the ICC in terms of uh, doing that. Putin is a head of state. Do you a head of state can just be arrested anywhere? How many crimes have your country committed in Iraq? How many crimes have everyone else who's so vocal today committed in Iraq and Afghanistan? Have you arrested them? You, you, know, you know the impact that You're this making a lot of noise about putting a state of working for peace between Ukraine and Russia, and you fail to resolve the war. Where are the weapons of mass destruction? Tony Blair went to Iraq and claimed that they are weapons of mass destruction. Do you see anybody standing against that in the United Kingdom and Britain? More than uh, millions of people have died in Iraq and yeah. Afghanistan, and there are no weapons of mass destruction. We know what the war is about Mr. Secretary General. between Russia and Ukraine. We want peace. That's what is important, so that the world can thrive. And the organs and institutions of the world that institute world peace must not be conspicuous by their silence in deciding... Decisively. We, we, we don't have... That's why South Africans are saying, let's get proper people to go and run these institutions. Are you, the, are proper, are you the proper person? I'm a proper guy. I mean, I don't want to go too far back into history, but at various times you failed to actually file a tax return on time. Yeah. You've been accused of different financial offences. You've never been convicted, yeah. but those, some of those yeah. uh, charges were never brought to court. But you tell South Africans, despite your own history, yeah. you are the guy to run their economy. That's why. That's the mind of a lazy person who doesn't do his work. You, you will have to refer back to 15 years. I'm, I've grown up Mm. over a period of time, build a solid political party. The only thing you can keep on referring to is what you interviewed me about it 12 years ago. Get something new, my brother. No, I'm very... Show a skill of and a hard-working 
presenter who does his research. You can't fault me. Since I've made my mistakes on text when I was very young, when I was almost 27 years old, fixed that problem. Today, I'm a 42-year-old married man with children who has taken responsibility and built a solid party to be the third largest party without the support of white monopoly capital and the owners of the South African economy. You keep on referring to old and old things because you are now beginning to sound like a scratched CD. You have every right to tell, tell me, me of to me tell now. me you have changed. Tell me of me now. I've been let's in Parliament one, for 10 years. Let's take one particular aspect of your policy position. Yes. Do you think aligning yourself with Vladimir Putin is going to be good for South Africa? But that's what it is now. South Africa is in alliance with Russia, with India, uh, with Brazil, with China. So why are you asking me as if it's uh, some policy that is going to be implemented South Africa right after now. I took over? South Africa is in alliance with Russia now. South Africa right now calls itself non-aligned. In the context of the war, but these are two different things. South Africa is an ally of Russia. Now, the second question is, where does South Africa stand on the war? It says I'm a non-aligned in relation to war, but Russia remains South Africa's friend. So we cannot create confusion around there. Don't create an impression that it is Malema who is going to come and create an alliance with Russia. But there are some very specific Actually, points, if, I will, if I may I say so. I will go beyond that. I will go beyond the, the friendship with Russia. And in the war, I will align with Russia and I will even supply the weapons to Russia. Because Russia is in a war with, with imperialism. And any agenda that seeks to push back uh, imperialist agendas is well within the policies of the EFF. You say, quite clearly, I would arm Vladimir yes. Putin. Yes. You know that the International Criminal Court wants Vladimir Putin to face war crimes charges. Mm. It must start with Tony Blair. It must start with George Bush. It must go to Barack Obama. Then it can go to... Uh, put. So, so let's get this so straight. You're saying to me and, that and your, the, your if policy, it, if you were in power in South Africa, is quite simple. That your enemy's enemy, and it seems you regard the US and its allies as the enemy, yes. your enemy's enemy yes. is your friend. Never mind if he's a suspected war criminal. Never mind if the UN and the ICC say they have compelling evidence of Russian war crimes. You don't care. As far as you're concerned, my enemy's enemy no, is you, my friend. You, you're exaggerating, but, but another point which you don't want me to go there is that um, Tony Blair accepted that they were wrong about Saddam Hussein uh, to an extent that he did uh, an apology of a thug, right? You, you have never called for his arrest. A man admitting that I, I was wrong. Uh, uh, to how many people died there, uh, uh, killed by those people. So all I'm saying is we are with President Putin because uh, it's not an enemy of my enemy. It is an anti-imperialist agenda that says the American dominance and its allies should be undermined at all costs. Anti-imperialism, even though Vladimir Putin is quite explicit about his desire to revive a form of empire, he says countries like Ukraine have no right to independent sovereign existence. He appears to believe that the best thing would be to revive an empire, the Soviet empire. But you're anti-imperialist? We are anti-imperialist. That's a debate for another day. Uh -huh. The war is not what he's talking The war is about the expansion. And had there been a, a, a common ground found, this could have been avoided. We are not for imperialism, even if it were to come from Russia. If he does that, we'll condemn it. But we know for a fact that progressive forces such as China have also aligned themselves uh, with Putin to try and create an alternative from the imperialist uh, domination of the world. And that's what the EFF is about. You